Yeah, all right. Welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, a show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back using the radio, uh, reimagining ham radio in the information age. Hey, today is not a good example of moving information back and forth. We are going to talk about wires, power wires, coax, and just to let you know, size matters. This time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. I'm going to throw you guys for a loop on that one. You know, you guys are probably hearing this, this bumper music, and it's like, oh, what is that song? I don't know. It's going to eat you up. See, I'm not going to tell you, though. You guys got to let me know what that was in the comments. That was that was an obscure one. All right, let's talk about amateur radio and wires and coax, uh, what you need to know, and length and width. It matters, guys. It matters. Let's check it out. All right, so starting with coax, let's have that discussion. Thicker is always better, but thicker is always uh, more expensive as well. So what's the right uh, width or type of coax that you can, uh, well, not only safely use, but effectively use, you know, getting out, receiving. Um, coaxial cable uh, itself, um, it actually absorbs amateur radio frequencies or alternating frequencies. It's like a big capacitor. So it's kind of like the worst thing you could possibly use with your radio is coax cable. Some people are using a uh, called window line or maybe it's, some, it's often called ladder line. Uh, it doesn't have any coaxial capacitance in it, not really, at least not compared to coax. But uh, coax is really convenient. It's cheap and you can overcome a lot of the... Um, that incipient uh, drain that you get through coax if you run short lengths and, and thick enough cable. So there's a few lengths of coax that I consider when I'm using amateur radio and it really depends on how long the run is and the frequency running through the cable. It makes a big difference. So if you run in high frequencies, you really need thick coax. If you're running low frequencies like AHF, uh, it doesn't need to be that thick uh, because the uh, the waves are slow enough. You know the capacitance builds up and then stops, and then you know the wave subsides. Um, where with high frequencies, it's really just absorbing those frequencies as fast as it can. That's the way I think of it. Think of coax as big capacitors absorbing, soaking up your signal and just kind of converting it to heat. So the, the coaxes I use, you can see here on the website, there's, there's, there's a bunch of different ones from small to large, top to bottom, and you can see the attenuation table. And this is like the frequencies going across to the right. So you've got HF over here at 30 megahertz on the left, and you've got two meters over here at 146 in the middle. And this is the attenuation chart. Oh, just a big scary word. So let me let me give you the, the guidance on attenuation. So if, if it's a 3 dB loss, that's half your signal. Half your signal. So you definitely want to stay above 3 dB in whatever your run is. And so this is like per 100 feet. So uh, you know, I'm just picking one at random. So RG8X over here. This is popular for HF. Um, for uh, 50 or 30 megahertz, it's 10 meter band, you're, the, the attenuation is only 2 dB. Um, so yeah, you're losing a lot of signal, but again, this is 100 feet, right? So, and you're above the loss of 3.0, so it's, it's, you know, you're not losing half your signal there. So that would be a good cable for 100 feet um, with an attenuation at 30 megahertz for 2 for 2.0. So just to give you an examples of what these look like, so this is RG, I, I, I don't, use this very often, so I can't even remember the name of it. This is RG316. Um, I wouldn't use a length longer than this, and I definitely wouldn't use it for UHF. I would probably use it for um, maybe with an HT, you know, just to take this, the stress of a heavier cable off of the HT. Um, you know, I don't... I don't know if I'd even use it for that, to be honest. In fact, maybe if I was on fire and I needed to... No, I don't think I would use this. Just don't use RG316. So I don't even remember the name of it. This, this, this stuff's just too thin. So the next one I would consider, and this is for like your mobile rig, for VHF in particular, this is going to be RG58. All right, this one's a good, has a really good price point. It's attenuation level at 146 megahertz, which is a two meter band, is, I'm just looking at here, RG58 AU is 6.1. So do not run this more than 25 feet or you're going to lose half your signal, okay? So at 100 feet, you're losing tons. Uh, what would 75%? I'd have to multiply it out. But anyways, RG58, this is great for mobile units or VHF uh, for short runs, like from your dashboard to the back of your car, maybe where your antenna is. RG58, it's flexible, easy to use. The attenuation isn't horrible. Now, looking at HF, 
uh, this for high frequencies, which is actually low frequencies. This is would be like you know you're from three meg uh, three megahertz up to thirty megahertz. I like these RG8X. That's what this stuff is. It's a little bit thicker. Um, I actually probably have a hundred feet of this of RG8X. Um, so I'm actually losing about half of my signal getting out of the shack and way up into the oak trees back there. Um, but with, you know, with HF, it's not that critical. I mean, there's a lot of QRP rigs out there, right? Just running at a few watts. So you know, I got a hundred watt radio and I got a hundred feet of RG8X. I'm probably losing half my signal in the coax, but this stuff is cheaper. It's easy to run and it gets to the oak trees and I still get out with RG8X. Um, so that's another one that I use. You can use all the ones in between too. In fact, I've even got some LR240 uh, out there. It's a little stiff. It's solid core stuff. You know, maybe in wall, LMR, the LMR 240 stuff it would make would make more sense. I'm um, speaking of hardline. Um, there's also uh, LMR 400. This is the big boy. This is kind of the gold standard. Um, LFR, LMR 400 typically has a hard a copper core in the center. It's got a foam insulation. This has the least amount of loss, and it's still really reasonably uh, affordable. What I discovered, they have something called LMR 400 Flex. See, normally LMR 400 would not do this. Okay, so look up LMR 400 Flex. So this you can actually run through walls. Um, you can, you know, you can actually bend it around, get it into your radio. So LMR 400 Flex is something I like. It's what's in the wall right behind me um, for VHF and UHF. So the guidance here on this is the higher the frequency, the thicker the cable, the longer the cable, the thicker the cable. So for UHF, if this is really important, think of thumb size, right? Uh, for, let's see, for HF, for long runs, you're thinking uh, maybe, I don't know, finger size, I guess. And then for like your mobile rig, I'm thinking pinky size, um, this kind of coax. And then if you really need a, you know, just a, maybe you just got a receiver or something, you can get this, this really thin, wispy stuff, but, but I wouldn't count on it in a pinch. Um, so that is coax. So coax isn't the only wire you run to your radio. You obviously run power wires, and those count too. You need to get the maximum voltage and the available current to that radio. You're just not going to get out. Um, so wire gauges, these are important. Wire gauge and length. So again, like coax, if you've got a longer length of wire, it needs to be a little bit thicker. Um, we do have to worry about resistance, not impedance. So with coax, we're worried about impedance, which is resistance with alternating current. And with resistance is just uh, the, the direct current resistance. So there's a few gauges of wire that we're going to use in amateur radio. Um, this is a number eight wire. This is... Um, this is for like tying batteries together and stuff. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily run this out to a rig because it's pretty stiff. It's not very practical in that regard. So number eight wire, um, maybe for, for tying batteries together, solar setups, that kinds of thing. Um, for what I like to use, like in-wall stuff, is this uh, number, what is this, number 10 wire? I think this is number 10. It, it's always going to say on the side. Um, this is going to be good for in-wall types of things, like solar, or you got battery running through your wall. Um, if you do run it through your wall, make sure you put it in conduit, at least uh, the uniform electric code here in America. You need, if you're running THHN wire through a wall, and use, put it in conduit. That's, at least that's what I did. It's a hassle, but I think I think it's worth the effort. So that's number 10 wire. And then what a lot of radios are using is number 12 wire. And when, I, when you talk about making it short, boy, this is making it short, right? This goes from the battery to my Yaesu FTM 400 back there if I can. Uh, almost no resistance buildup in that wire. You know, a lot of radios will ship wire that looks more like this. You know, this is like 10, 12 feet long, and we're seeing a voltage drop in these kinds of th things, especially when you add those fuses. And wire that... Uh, Actually, when I looked at my Yaesu, it's actually shipping number 14 wire. This is number 14. I wouldn't go like from the dashboard to the back of the car on this. You know, I might go from dashboard to the front of the car, to the battery, that kind of thing. Um, so number 14 wire is getting a little thin for what I like. Um, if you need to do some longer runs, you know, wire is expensive, let's face it. I actually go to the garden store and get some of this. This is 12 gauge wire and it is direct burial grade and uh, it was 12 gauge will carry, I don't know, maybe 20 amps. Now this is not UL listed, so do not put this in your wall, conduit or not, do not. Um, this is ETL listed, which is kind of like a UL listing, though it's based out of the UK. And supposedly it meets the UL requirements, but at least here in the Americas, you need to be using UL listed uh, wiring, especially running any kind of current. It's mostly because of the, uh, you know, 12 gauge is 12 gauge, right? Stranded wire. 
Um, but it's the heat rating on this. This insulation is, you know, it's obviously soft. Um, it probably can't take the heat, whereas this THHN wire, uh, this UL listed stuff, uh, this is rated at 90 degrees centigrade. Um, this stuff is good to go. I really like the THHN stuff. Um, so just to let you know how much current we can run through each one of these. So at 90 degrees, the THHN wire, for example, the 14 gauge stuff is going to run at 25 amps. Okay, so you're going to want your fuse to be either that or a little bit lower. Um, 12 gauge stuff, uh, 30 amps unless you're using the non-UL listed stuff, in which case I would go even lower. 10 gauge wire, we're getting thick here at 40 amps. And uh, the eight number eight wire, this again would be for like uh, putting, putting batteries together, 55 amps. So just to give you an example of what a amperage a radio is gonna pull, like an HF rig, a big one, ICOM 7300, it's gonna pull 20 amps. In fact, I think the fuse for this is actually 25 amps. So I'm pretty sure it won't pull more than 25 for a dual band rig, a 50 watt dual band rig. I just measured mine at nine and a half amps. Um, so, you know, whatever wire you need for that, uh, don't run the wire at its ampacity rating. You know, there's kind of an 80% rule out there as well. So only run the wire at most 80%. I try not even to go over 50%. But if you got some long lengths, you're gonna have a voltage drop. Um, I actually measured this on my, uh, my dual bander. So I hooked up my battery. This is Yesu FTM 400, and this is the battery voltage with, uh, actually, I was actually using this, right? So there's almost no resistance. I got 13.3 volts. Okay, that was cool. And then I, uh, let me go back, go back up one here. Um, then I added, what was I running? I think it was, I came up with 12.6 volts. This is at a full 50 watts, and this was with the little four-inch cable, um, with a load. So when you put a load on the wire, the voltage drops, right? And um, that's a power factor? No, nah, I can't remember what that's called, that phenomenon. Anyways, there's a voltage drop across any conductor, um, but the current's gonna be constant. There's gonna be a voltage gradient through the conductor, and the current's gonna be constant. If you put an electron in one end, the electron's gonna fall out the other end. Um, so this was just keying up as the shortest possible uh, a power cable and I got 12.6 volts. So I went from 13.2 to 12.6 just keying up. So that's really just the battery drawing down. That's what the battery does. So 12.6 is kind of my baseline there. So after that, it's like, well, let's, let's lengthen the cable a little bit. So I took it up to, uh, where did I take it up to? Uh, this was six feet and I came down to 12.5 volts. So I only lost a tenth of a volt going from four inches to six feet. I was actually kind of surprised. I expected it to go down quite a bit more. But if you're like me, maybe you've got the solar generator on the other side of the room and you need about <laughs> this much cable to get from your, your battery system, your solar setup over to your, your Yesu radio, which is actually right behind me right here. Just took a picture of this here. And that voltage drop there actually takes, takes me down to 11.9. 11.9 volts brutal um so that's that's getting below like bare minimum and this is about 200 and what was this so uh, you know i actually measured the wattage coming out you know so watts is volts times amps and the lower your voltage remember we said the amperage is going to be staying the lower your voltage that means your watts is going to come down so that's about 120 watts um running here and it's only 11.9 volts so that's really is pulling down the voltage i think that's going to have an impact on how uh, how far you're getting out uh, just drawing down the voltage that hard uh, some radios are going to be better than others. Um, you know, maybe the ASU can like up the current. It actually didn't. The current was the same the whole time. So the wattage at the radio is actually coming down the longer I went uh, with the, with these uh, cables. So while we're talking about power drops over uh, longer conductors, thinner conductors, uh, another thing to consider is your fuse types. Um, I've come up almost a whole vote a whole volt just by reseeding fuses. <laughs> this is a blade type fuse. Um, Reseating a fuse every now and then is, is probably going to clean up that connection. You know, if you just wiggle a connection, it's going to conduct a little better. So you've got uh, you've got automotive glass type fuses, and then you've got blade type fuses. I'm partial to the blade stuff, um, unless you are running it through a firewall of your car. These glass fuses are going to be probably uh, better. Um, with the blade type fuse, you know, the fuse holder is actually built into the wire here, and it goes in right here. Try running that through a firewall, right? So this is going to be more like for your base unit. So a, a fuses are a consideration. If you if you really look at that voltage rating, like 11.9 volts there, and uh, wiggle your fuses, clean up your connections, shorten your wire, make them thicker, 
get that voltage up. Um, you're definitely gonna, your radio is gonna like it a lot better. You're gonna get out a, a lot further if you're actually getting up to those recommended voltages. All right, I think we talked enough about ham radio wires. We're talking about coax, um, you know, uh, the, the, the radio RF soaking capabilities of coax, and we talked about the resistance through uh, conductors, you know, thick and, and short is, is your friend when it comes to these guys. We talked about fuses a little bit, and we talked about, or we're going to talk about, the patrons of the channel. Thank you, guys. There are thousands, literally, I don't know how to say thousands. It's ridiculous. There's over a thousand of you guys. I, this is overwhelming. Um, I really don't know what to say anymore. The patrons of the channel, thank you. Uh, Patreon.com slash KM6LYW. Um, being a patron gets you access to the DigiPi software image and the SD card image. Um, so if you put it in a Raspberry Pi and if you have a tablet or phone or Wi-Fi device, that's all you need. And hook it up to your radio and you have access to every digital or data mode there is uh, for just being a patron of the channel. So it implements all of the data modes we talk about on this channel incessantly, and you can have a copy of the DigiPi yourself by going to digipi.org, being a patron and helping out with the channel. Um, I've actually got a DigiPi running right back here. I don't know if you can see it. It's actually hooked up to my Yesu. It's doing APRS stuff right now, but it does all this stuff. JSA call, WSJTX, slow scan. Again, all you need is your tablet and it does all of that over Wi-Fi. You don't need to hook it up to a monitor or anything special. Um, in fact, if you've got a USB-based radio, all you need is a $15 Raspberry Pi and maybe this little screen on here. Totally cool. In fact, the screen looks like that. I, the latest version of DigiPi. Have you, guys, have you guys tested this out? The latest version of DigiPi has this cool little screen in the web browser now. So if you can't afford a $12 screen on top of your $15 Raspberry Pi, no problem. You can see the screen in your web browser. All right, and then of course there's the APRS packet log happening here. Um, and uh, don't forget, we can do APRS messaging on DigiPi as well. So um, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. All the digital modes we talk about this on this channel, uh, KM6LYW Radio, all in the DigiPi SD card image going to patrons of the channel. Thank you, guys. All right, so let me know what you're doing with your coax. Let me do with, know what you're doing with your power lines. Um, these are all just my opinions, uh, just through blind, dumb luck and experience. Uh, just I've, I've messed with all of these. You know, there's been a lot of shortcomings. There's been a lot of cool stuff. I probably overpaid for some things and uh, skimped on others um, and paid the price that way. All right, guys. Hey, my name is Craig. I'm in California. Uh, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW, and I am clear.